Well, I hope good to see everybody. It's fun how crisis sometimes bring everybody together. You know, it's, it's, this, is, this is exciting times for sure. Um, this is so today we're going to talk about Zoom a bit and also what we're calling remote instruction support. And we want to kind of talk about how we can support whatever kind of adjustments um, you folks want to make with your teachers for the remainder of the semester. Um, so one of the primary ways we're, we're suggesting an adjustment is through using Zoom, which is a web conferencing tool. But there's a lot of other, obviously, there's a lot of other technology we have on campus and solutions. We're in a really good position compared to a lot of other schools in terms of having our students, faculty, and staff on the iPad and having so many applications and licenses and so forth. So we think we can, we think we can um, we do a pretty good job here. Um, today we're just going to get hands on with Zoom this morning, and we're going to open it up certainly for Q&A, and, and it's not just the Garrett Show, so Dan's here as well, and Brittany, and Leitz is, is back helping out as well. Um, and there's some faculty uh, as well who volunteered very generously some, some help with having expertise with, with building um, remote instruction or helping out with remote instruction. So, so today that's essentially what we're going to do. We're going to talk about sort of the challenge of remote delivery and kind of framing it down. So what we're not asking and we're not suggesting is you all of a sudden rebuild your course to be an online course. So this isn't, you know, we're not saying go and teach online at all. Uh, but more like kind of how can we do and finish um, using remote, remote strategy. We're talking about how you use Zoom. Maybe Zoom is what you choose to be your bread and butter. Maybe not. Maybe we do a mix. And then we're just going to do QA and, and make sure everyone's able to use, uh, use it um, effectively. And then there's, there's, a, there's a certain lunch break you guys are going to have to hang around for afterwards. There is going to be a 1 p.m. remote session. Um, Jennifer Herman, who's a higher grad from O2, has uh, agreed to offer up a, a, a live session via Zoom to talk about teaching and learning with Zoom. And she's the director of um, teaching excellence and teaching and learning at uh, Sims University. So we'll get the link out for you guys to check that out as well. So I'm just going to invite you guys to start by um, trying to join my conference. It's live right now. I've got a Zoom room up. Dan's joined it, and maybe Dan, you could maybe you could talk through how to join it. Yeah, sure. So uh, the first thing just to know at this point is that um, we have we have uh, pushed. Zoom to all the iPads. So uh, as long as you've been connected to the to the Wi-Fi network or to the internet some way, your, your iPad should already have Zoom downloaded and installed on it. Um, if you can't find it uh, this morning, then we had to just do a search for it. Uh, so you can just uh, pull down with two fingers on your home screen and pull up the search bar and you search for it. Um, if you can't find it, let us know. We can walk around and make sure you get there. Um, but once you're once you uh, once you found Zoom and you open it, yeah. don't activate the audio because we're going to be getting echoes that will blast us out of the room. <laughs> when you get to the audio, um, the screen you just cancel. It may even be a good idea to just turn it off. You can. Give you can. 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 a preview there. So where am I going? So you're going to put on Joy. Dan, can you bring up your Zoom app and just show us how it works? Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to leave your money. So for those who are still watching this morning, uh, Zoom looks like this. Um, it's a little blue. Uh, and so when you get to this screen here, uh, you'll want to click join. So I don't know if everybody's here. Or, or maybe you're past this, but you click join. And then up at the meeting ID is where you're going to put Garrett's meeting ID, uh, which I'll, I'll try to get uh, put back up there. So that's giving you a preview. Before you join, of what your frame looks like, yes. and then you can just click join to see if you're ready. Yeah, uh, this is an important distinction. Um, you may have already played around with Zoom, and if you're, you know, if you have a link in your email that says, you know, here's your personal room, don't follow that one because you're not the so host this time. Like it is the Garrett show right now, okay? <laughs> um, and so he's hosting, and everybody is being encouraged to join the meeting.
hand up. So now you can see, uh, so we're just having you guys kind of role play students or role play users join the room. And uh, you can see here from the, from the host perspective, over here on my application on the iPad, again, we're, we're doing everything from the iPad today. It's pretty similar across devices, but it's a little different. Um, on my iPad, as a host, you can see my personal user ID, which is the code you use to join my room. So this is a static ID. You all have your own ID. Um, and that's how we're recommending you at ask students to join your, your class or your conferences. Just sharing that code and having them click join on their app, like you guys did, and punch in the code, they're going to join your room. It's a static number. It doesn't change. Um, you, you can manually change it. We don't, please don't do that because what we're doing is we're sharing your code with students. So here on, um, and this is the awesome work from folks down at IT, from gentlemen. They went through, um, I'm, I'm here at MyHire.edu and you guys can see this under the faculty portal. You can see everybody who's, who's gone through and, and, and created a Zoom account. We've shared their a, a link, a hyperlink, which will take you right to your room. Um, right there on our list. We haven't shared this with students yet. We're going to wait until we get a little closer next week. Um, but if you, you know, want this out there, uh, here it is, and folks can, can access the link, which will take you right to your room. Okay. Yeah? Uh, just one note about that. Since, since all your students have iPads, and since we have already pushed the app down to their iPads, if they click that link, it will automatically redirect them into the Zoom app, which has already been downloaded and we'll put them right into your meeting. So we've tried to streamline this as much as possible. So your students, as long as they have that link, should be able to just click on it and just be directed right into the app and right into the meeting. You shouldn't have to put in any codes or anything like that. So in, in each course, will have its own link, not each faculty member? Uh, no, each faculty member. Um, so if I have, for example, I, I saw you have, I have two sections of genetics. They both have the same code? They will have the same code. So you just have to be aware if you've got a class back to back um, that you can go and participate and you can see if anyone is there that should be and you can move people. And you might also want to recommend to your students when you're you know, talking about this, especially if you've got back to back classes, that you tell them don't log in more than five minutes ahead of class. That way they're not jumping into your previous class and that way you should be, you know, not paying attention to those kinds of issues. And we can help you set up a special um, link or for multiple courses, but this is just what we're setting up for everybody. We can also, Brittany's um, volunteered to drop these links into your Moodle course if you're using Moodle. So you can have this at the top of your Moodle course. Students can just know, here's my time, here's my link, I'm just going to pop in as normal via the web during class time. So we can, we can definitely do that. We will be doing that, that setup for you. Um, yeah, so, so now we're, we're in Zoom a little bit. I wanted to speak for a moment about some of the settings. Um, or maybe Dan wants to. Basically, the, the big thing to think about is audio. So we're doing really good right now. There's no crazy noises coming across the room. If you're in the room with two people who are in the same, if you're in the same physical space with two people who are in the same Zoom room, and if both their mics are on, you're going to get this feedback effect. Your students might have that if you're in the same space, or we would have that. I've set it up so everybody joins and they're automatically muted. And you can see that I can see when I click on participants, who's all in my room, right? I can see who's showing up for class, I can take attendance here, and I can I can um, control uh, control mics and, and video cam as well. Users also have control of that. So I've allowed you folks to turn your mic on if you want. Um, so it gives us some other options which we do not even go in there. Um, so and at the bottom it gives me a scrolling view of who's all in there. Oh, I think I'm sharing my screen. So what I'm doing right now is I've come up to share. I'm going to, I'm going to cancel my share. So now Dan is, now, and all of you are back to kind of just seeing my screen. Um, Dan, can you turn on the grid view real quick? Yeah. So grid view is just going to a... show up right over here. And I'll click that. Uh, I can now just see everybody all at one time. Otherwise, whoever's talking, it will bounce the video to them. Uh, but if you go to the grid, everyone's just there equally uh, in that fashion. So, so 
and I've been Dan's operating kind of as a student, we're doing the role play, and as a student, Dan come up to share content. So share content right here. And so now students can share files, websites, they can open up a whiteboard, or they can even just screencast whatever's going on in their screen. Um, so that if you've got groups or students kind of showing off work or you're inviting them to share some work, that's a great way to do it. And of course I can do that as an instructor as well. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen so you can see my PowerPoint. This might be how I, do, I deliver synchronous or live sessions. So I'm just going to click on, for me, I'm going to click on share screen. And on my device it brings up a little pop-up which says, do you want to use your camera to share the screen? I click yes, start broadcast. And it just counts down and then it's going to launch my screen. So now Dan can see whatever's on my screen, which in this case is, you know, my, my desktop, and you can see, you know, what, what, uh, what Dan sees down there. So here's, here's my, my PowerPoint. I've got this open, and I'm just going to continue. So we talked about how you can find your link uh, on, on myheart.edu. You can also find it just via your Zoom app, um, or you can just share your, your personal ID code. So there's many, many ways to join Zoom, um, and we're also going to be popping into Moodle. I found this meme online this morning, it made me laugh. Uh, and I'm kind of bemoaned the fact that I can't make Lord of the Rings references anymore with students because they just don't get them. Uh, but I found this funny for a lot of reasons because we're really interested in the technicality of the language. As I was saying earlier, we're not asking you to teach a course on it. We're asking you to do remote instruction, or we're suggesting maybe remote instruction is a good, is a good option. And um, I also think, you know, we all know what happened to good old Boromir, didn't it? Well, and uh, they did do the thing, right? Frodo and Sam did just walk into water and get it done. So, so I'm, I'm kind of excited about, about uh, what, what this meme brings up and, and, and what we can do, uh, certainly, together. Um, so we're, we're not preparing to teach an online course or adjust direct instruction to be delivered remotely. There are many ways to accomplish this. It is gonna, it's going to vary by course and by instructor. So why might you want to use synchronous sessions? So using like Zoom, using live sessions. Um, a lot of your courses are already designed to be delivered um, synchronously. They're already designed to be delivered live um, at the same time. So obviously being on Zoom isn't the same thing as being in person. But it's a little, it's closer than trying to transition to an online format. Uh, doing live sessions, so offering live sessions at the same time, are going to continue to contribute to a sense of community and continuity with the course. So students are going to feel like Hey, the things, they've already been sort of set up with certain expectations with how the course operates. They've already been introduced to the syllabus and kind of know how things work. So continue to offer live courses are going to kind of help them, um, I think, continue to operate as much, as, as normal as possible. Um, and certainly doing live sessions allows you to check for comprehension, students to engage directly through questions and, and having discussions. Um, again, we're not suggesting you have to do that. You might adjust things a little bit. So I'm thinking about how I might want to adjust things in my course. Um, what I want to do with this is do live sessions, but not for two hours. Um, normally we do two hours twice a week, but I don't think, you know, from what we're doing with first years, doing two hours of a live session is that's going to be super productive. So I do want to have that continuity. I want to have live check-ins with my students. So I plan on doing 30 to 45 minutes at the normal time. And then I want to have activities that they complete on their own time. And then throughout the week, I'm going to schedule a one-on-one -on -one maybe 10 minute conference. So that extra time that I'm not doing a live session, I want to check-ins with students. I want to meet with them and see how they're doing in the course. 